Thanks for tuning in to more NFL handicapping coverage on the R Lads Football Network. OFN NFL preview with Ryan Dunleavy of the New York Post. Ryan, how's it going? Good, Greg. How are you doing? More energy than this than last week, right? It can't be yeah. any worse. No, last week you caught me on a bad day. Today was my day off. Ah, day off. All right, perfect. Well, we may have to do this from now on. This will we'll yeah. get the Thursday night games in too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not that I um, mean we really care about this Thursday night's game. I think it's interesting. The last two for number one overall pick quarterbacks sign me up. Not bad, not bad. Good point. Jags have lost eighteen straight. That was some wild game. There were some wild games last week, and Jacksonville. I mean, they return a missed field goal for a touchdown. <laughs> they get a pick six on a trick play against them. And that's just a crazy game. Sort of like, exactly. remember last week when we were handicapping that game and it was like, well, I'm not sure about taking Arizona because, I mean, yeah. Jack, yeah, because you could see Arizona screw around until the end and then it'll cover yep. late. And that's exactly what they did. Yep. They, uh, Arizona is three and oh, and I put them sixth in my power rankings, but they could easily be one and two. I mean, if they, if not for a missed chip shot field goal and if they were playing yeah. anybody. And if they were playing anybody with a pulse last week, they probably would have lost. So, so Cincinnati though, got to give them credit. It's nice to see them at two and one. Boy, this is the. It's funny to say this, but if you think about it, this is the biggest game for the Bengals in the last few years. They can yeah. go three and one as a seven point favorite against a team that's lost eighteen straight games on national television. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's a great point. You yeah. cannot blow uh, this game. So. Certainly since like Andy Dalton had that run of four straight playoff appearances. Yeah, certainly their biggest game since then. The biggest game of Zach Taylor's career. I mean, people have Zach Taylor as the coach most likely to be fired. If he wins this game, it won't be him. No. Nope. And I actually like Cincinnati in this one. How could you not? But I just can't give, you know, seven, eight points with the Bengals. I just can't do it. Correct. I, I took I took uh, not for our picks, but in my debut betters column for the post, I took uh, I took the Jaguars. OK, now uh, let's go over Sunday's games. Colts, Miami uh, Colts uh, getting two in this one. Uh, Carson Wentz uh, looked like he was playing on uh, a half ankle each. It uh, let's just, uh, you know, when you think about it. How ridiculous was it for the Colts, knowing Carson Wentz injury history, to not have a veteran backup? Correct. I mean, yeah, it makes you wonder why Jacoby Brissett wanted to leave. Because if you're Carson Wentz's backup, yeah. that's a pretty good gig. You're going to get to play. You're going to get probably get in some big games because when he plays, he'll put your team in a good position to win. So you probably get to play when your team's six and four yep. or something. So and now he gets to play uh, his no. former team. Correct, because being Tua's backup is just as likely yeah. to be able to play. So, uh, no, I mean, look, this is two teams that are pretty desperate, two teams that I think I had both. I certainly had one. I certainly had the Dolphins in my playoffs. I know you had the Colts in your playoffs. So uh, two teams that are really desperate. I think the Colts are a little more desperate, so I'm going to give them the edge. Uh, Miami, first time they're favorite this year. Eight, one, and one against the spread. Their last 10 is a home favorite. That's interesting, including three and oh under Brian Flores. So this is a spot they usually have done well recently. And we'll see, uh, by the way, Miami at Tampa Bay next week, the battle of the state of Florida. The Colts will be on Monday night football next week at Baltimore. Okay. Look at you throwing some shade at the Jaguars that Miami Tampa is the battle. <laughs> yeah, for I know. Oh, Jacksonville. Yeah. I didn't even think about them. Uh, Houston and Buffalo. This is one of those games that I don't think anybody outside Buffalo and Houston will watch. I'm not even sure how many people in Houston will watch because Houston was actually a nice story with Tyrod Taylor. Now it's mm -hmm. like, forget it. Even though I must say this, I, I thought he played particularly well uh, in the preseason as a rookie and he didn't play awful in the first game as a rookie. So, you know, I, Davis Mills might have a good career as a backup in the NFL may not be somebody to keep an eye on, but the bills finally woke up. 
Uh, yeah. No, look, here's why I like the – you know my rule of thumb here, Greg, is that when an elite team – and the Bills are a borderline elite team. They're a top-tier team. Play is a bad team. No spread number bothers me. I, I really don't care that. I know it's unusual for it to be more than 14. I uh, don't really care that it's whatever it is, 16 and a half, 17 right now. Uh, doesn't really bother me at all. I looked it up. So their last six regular season games, they have five wins. And those five wins are by at least are by an average, an average of 29 points per game. They steamroll teams when they beat them. So does not uh does not scare me at all a 17 point lead. The Bills know how to take a 10 point lead and make it 30 in an instant. Yep. And again, you have a rookie quarterback on the road. Uh this could get ugly real fast. And and especially with Buffalo's next two opponents, they're going to want to end this game quick because they're at Kansas City and then at Tennessee. So. Yeah. Okay, now here's an interesting matchup. Carolina and the Dallas Cowboys, a battle of 3 and 0 spread teams. And the Cowboys are a four and a half point favorite. Now, even though uh you know I like Dallas to win the East and I and I think Dallas will win this game, uh they have not been good in this spot over the years. They uh, now, one of these spreads I didn't even know about, but they're 0 and 8 in the last eight uh, after at home after they play a Monday night football game as far as a cover. But Matt Rule has covered eight out of his nine road games as a head coach. That is pretty good. Um, I'm, I definitely don't like that JC Horn's out. I definitely don't like when Christian McCaffrey's out, <laughs> which is why I think the Cowboys are going to win the game. I could just see the Cowboys, you know, being a little bit flat after the Monday night game because their offense was incredible on Monday night. And I just think Carolina is also a really good defensive team that they'll be able to keep it relatively close. And we've seen Sam Darnold up here in New York uh, play without his top offensive weapons, and it's not pretty. So I don't think they'll be able to keep up with Dallas. You're right. Carolina has a good, uh, good defense, but what's a good defense? Unless you're playing the giants, a good defense only holds a team to 21, 24 points. Now you can hold the giants to like six, but uh, you get 21 points maybe for, uh, for Dallas. I can't see Carolina scoring 21 points. What would scare me in this game? If I was a better was it would be Mike McCarthy's, laughable time management uh somehow screwing up and giving the the panthers a chance to backdoor cover that would scare could me. happen uh that's that would not surprise me either so cowboys will host the giants next week carolina will host the eagles and uh yeah we'll see uh, we'll see what happens here but uh, dallas uh, looking pretty good right now are you still uh, what's your pick right now in the nfc east is it still Washington? No, it would have to be Dallas. I, I mean, I made that pick before Ryan Fitzpatrick went out for undetermined length of time. It would have to be Dallas. Okay. Uh, let's move on now to your five-star pick of the week. This is also an additional pick for me. Tennessee, New York. I thought this spread should have been closer to 10. I'm surprised it's only a, a touchdown. The Jets have lost their last two by a 51-6 margin. So even if they shrink it a little bit, they're still not going to cover seven. That's just a big ask after the way that they played the last couple of weeks, especially the way Tennessee's looked over the past like six quarters. Uh, yeah, I, I can't see this game being in the fourth quarter with the Jets with the chance to win or tie the football game. I just I can't see it. The Jets have six points over the last two games. Six. They haven't scored a touchdown in eight quarters. So to me. I actually went back and I said, "Well, when, let's say they score six again. Like, when's the last time? When's the last time Tennessee didn't score at least fourteen yeah. points in a, in a yeah. game? Because that's what you need to cover. And it's week six of 2019 before the, you know Ryan Tannehill became like this Renaissance quarterback. Before Derrick Henry became a bulldozer when he was still kind of a bust. So they typically score in the twenties at least with." 
you know, their offensive weapons. They really haven't even hit full stride yet with uh, Julio Jones and A.J. Brown and all. I could see them really laying one on the Jets here, like 31-10. I think the Jets' offense will do better because the one thing we do have to keep— They can't do worse. Well, what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is that if you look at it, Zach, first game of the season, first half, you understand he's a rookie but comes out and plays pretty well in the second half. Last two games, he's gone up against Vic Fangio and Bill Belichick. So he and he doesn't have the talent either. So it's it's very understandable of how he's looked the last couple of weeks. That's not the case with Tennessee. Tennessee is not a very good defensive team. So I I suspect the Jets will put I'll say about Ten. thirteen to seventeen points yeah. on the board, but it's still not going to be enough to cover. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, now talk about uh, a pretty big one, uh, AFC NFC matchup, not a lot of division matchups, by the way, this week, uh, Cleveland at Minnesota, Kevin Stefanski returns to Minnesota, huge win by the Vikings last week to save their season. And now considering how close they were, they should have beat Arizona. I think they're going to beat Cleveland. This is my this is one of my two three star picks of the week. They've covered three straight as a home dog, including last week. Cleveland is just two seven and three against the spread. Their last twelve as a road favorite. I'm still just not completely sold that Cleveland is anywhere near as good as they're going to need to be by the end of the season. So I think this is a really good spot for Minnesota to get back to five hundred. I agree, and the Browns are my Super Bowl pick. Uh, from the AFC and I just they just the Vikings are such a weird team they saved their season last year their offense looks like it's in super high gear the last two weeks the Browns meanwhile are kind of slogging along The Browns need to be punched in the face I think uh, metaphorically of course and I think the Vikings are the team to do that this week kind of give them a wake-up call like I think the Browns see the Colt, the Chiefs struggling they see the um, Ravens struggling and all of a sudden, they're like, oh, yeah, we're the best team in the AFC. I think they need to be knocked down a little bit and realize you can't slog along through these games. Okay, now, uh, Washington and Atlanta. Uh, this one, Washington's a one-and-a-half-point favorite. What has happened to the Washington defense? You can wake up now. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You mentioned Washington and Atlanta. By the way, it's oh, about 4.05 Eastern on Sunday the 26th. I'm sorry. Uh, I just saw both these teams. I was in Washington when they beat uh, the Giants on a walk on a walk off field goal. And I was in New York when the Falcons. Beat them. <laughs> There's not a unit. And look, I get it. Fitzpatrick's not with Washington right now. So the defense being asked to do more. But there is not a unit maybe in the entire NFL that I'm more yes. disappointed in meeting expectations than Washington's defense. It's, I, I don't uh, get it. I, ju- I understand the secondary. I just don't understand what's going on with the front seven. I mean, uh, Chase Young doesn't have a sack yet. Um, he was my pick for defensive player of the year. Um, so I'm very disappointed with Washington. I think they, I mean, the, you put Heineke on the road, all of a sudden the magic came off. I think this is an ugly, you know, 13-6, 16-9, 16-10 kind of game. One or two plays win it, and I'll take Pitts and Ridley as the guys who make the plays, basically. Uh, this is the third NFC East game for Atlanta already. So the, the, the first four games of the season, they're playing three NFC East teams. Yeah, They better yeah. win two out of three, <laughs> uh, or else that's not I mean, a good indication of how their season's going to go. I mean, put it this way. We did a preseason show. I thought Atlanta was one of the five worst teams in the league. I still kind of think that. I thought Washington won the, would win the NFC East, and I'm picking Atlanta here. So things change rapidly. Okay, now let's uh, talk about this Kansas City-Philadelphia game, another NFC East team here. Uh, this is uh, going to be one of your picks and actually also going to be one of my picks. So we're going to go up against each other here. And that's an obvious reason for me. You have Philly? Well, it's obvious for me. I mean, I took the Chargers why? last week, and I told you why. And the Ch- Kansas, I'm not. This is not a top pick, but the Chiefs are now one twelve and one against the spread in their last four. That is terrible. I mean, they just can't get out of their way there. And can you say 
Super Bowl hangover? <laughs> I don't believe in it. And I certainly don't believe in it for the Chiefs. <laughs> the Chargers always give them trouble. The Ravens were uh, overdue. If anybody doesn't think this is a 13 and 4 team, I think you're crazy. Uh, I expect the Chiefs to get it rolling. Obviously, Andy Reid's return to Philadelphia. Uh, and the Eagles tried to beat the Cowboys in a track meet on Sunday. They tried to go offense for offense with the Cowboys. Let me give you a tip, the uh, expert tip right here, NFL insider tip. You can't beat the Chiefs in a track meet. You can't do no. it. So if the Eagles are going to try to do that, then the Cowboys score is going to look nothing compared to the, how the Chiefs are going to blow them out. And the, the 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 major issue with the Chief, with the Eagles right now, their offensive line's pretty banged up. Uh, that's not good because remember that was the one thing that you you thought the Eagles had going for them. Whereas their line of scrimmage, and if their offensive yeah. line isn't very good, or because of their injuries, that and Brooks, whenever he's out, it seems like it's a bad result for the Eagles. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I completely understand where you're coming from here. Chiefs favorite by seven, but I'm just going to keep going against the chiefs until they cover another game. Andy, are going to be okay? He's going to be on the sidelines. Yeah, uh, that's from all. I mean, I don't think that's been officially determined yet, but every, all signs indicate. Yeah, yeah, that'd, that's be, that'd be really bad for the NFL marketing to have Andy Reed not go back to Philly uh, the one week where he has something wrong with him physically. That, that's a bad, bad break. But, of course, it's all about, most importantly, Andy Reid's health. Okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, our, a, a pick that we both like. This is one of your picks. This is one of this is actually one of my two three-stars. I can't believe I'm saying it. But, yes, the Detroit Lions are a three-star pick for me. This is probably just as good as an indication of how bad Chicago looks right now. I mean, that offense last week was historically type bad. I just can't even – thank goodness I didn't watch much of that game. 47 yards in the NFL, nine sacks. You know, we talked about Fields not looking very good going into this game, but I never suspected this. So, I don't know. I don't know what to say about Chicago because Nagy I, – I, the, the radio stations are going off, I'm sure, all week in Chicago. But Detroit – even though they lost the heartbreaker of heartbreakers, you know that it's it's a process with this organization. It's it's all right. We're gonna go get them next time, and I, yeah. I expect they will go get them next time. I can't believe they lost that game, giving up a fourth and nineteen. <laughs> Here's what I'll say about Detroit. I talked to some people around the NFL today who said, of all the bad teams in the NFL, and there's a lot of them right now. Detroit is the one you don't want to play because they're playing hard for their coach. They've got some playmakers with Swift and Hawkinson. I like Swift. He, he plays well. Yeah. 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 And Hawkinson's um, a real good player too. They, they, this is a team. They're not very good, but they're, you know, they're kind of like a blue collar. They know they're not very good. They know they have to outwork you. So they're the kind of team that'll get up off the mat after losing a heartbreaker like that to the Ravens. Like you said, Nagy's under fire. His play calling is atrocious. Uh, I just see Detroit willing themselves to victory. Yeah, I, I, this is, um, like I said, I mean, if this was a team that had a little bit more of a history, I'd be a five-star. Yeah. But I just can't yeah. go that much, you know, with Detroit. But that's how confident. And by the way, Khalil Max banged up. We don't even know if he's going to be yeah. able to play. Okay. Now, we're going to go to another game that we disagree with. And it was very hard for me. This was one of the hardest weeks for me to pick an upset special. That's I will say this. I thought this was one of my easier weeks to pick. All so right. This was maybe. very hard. It was down to two games. The game I decided not to go with was Pittsburgh because of who they were playing. But I love this game for the spread. And I figured, all right, I'll just go a little bit more for the upset. Giants oh. plus two ninety against the Saints. They're oh. seventeen and three against the spread in their last twenty on the road as a dog. I love that. So I'm like, okay, 
I still don't believe in New Orleans completely. I think they're going to kind of have an up and down kind of will win one or two and lose one or two. I, I still not. I mean, they didn't do nothing offensively, anything offensively last week. So uh, I could see the Giants defense keeping him in there. Maybe Winston has a couple of bad throws. You never know. But the Giants could be two and one. Come on. They really could be. Uh, so I'm going to say, okay, if I'm going to pick an upset, I might as well take the Giants. Oh, okay. My turn. Yes. The Giants are terrible. <laughs> uh, look, they, they're all in, they, they played the easiest part of their schedule was the first three games. They're all in three that there's talk up here that they could be 0 and 10. There's very legitimate talk. They don't, there's not a, there won't be favored know, again until the but Eagles. But that's not how it works. That's why they'll, why they'll upset somebody. Why? Who do they ever upset? They never upset anybody. They have well, Seattle last year. That's well, like the only in four, in four years on the beat. That's like their only win I that I can remember that can, would be anything even close to Joe quality. Judge. So, yeah, I would tell you that there is no chance they win this game. No, look, you look. It's Jameis Winston versus uh, Daniel Jones, not Eli Manning versus Drew Brees. But the Giants' last three trips to the Super Bowl, Superdome. Let me give you the Saints' point totals. 48, 49, 52. Uh, When did they they play them? When did they play those games? 9, 11, and 15. So 49 and a half points average over the last three games the Giants have given up in the Superdome. This is going to be a Superdome at full capacity for the first time since 2019. They lost the home game, Hurricane Ida, COVID-19, a fire on the stadium roof a couple weeks ago, and they're they're coming back. This is going to be as loud. Joe Judge compared it today to the famous game after Katrina where the place was rocking and they beat the Falcons. You'll get one of those. I think it could be that kind of atmosphere. I agree with them. So I think the Giants are dead man walking this. Keep in week. mind the Saints are one in five straight up. No, actually, excuse me, one in six against the spread in home openers in their last seven. Um, yeah, this is look, I, I completely know get where you're coming from. There's no question about it. Um Daniel Jones, we talked about how they, they he moved the football the proper way against Washington. What happened? in the game against Atlanta? Did they completely eliminate his running ability? Did he not even attempt to run the football? Or did he run yeah, the ball a few times? No, nah, nah, not like he was doing against Washington, no. Uh, look, they got, I mean, they got, they lost Sterling Shepard and Darius Layton in the game. They got super conservative on offense. Are they getting uh, either one back? No, uh, very unlikely, I would say. Very unlikely. Um, Shepard more so than Slayton, but very unlikely. Um, Saquon couldn't run the ball. They punted on fourth and three from the Falcons' 39-yard line, I mean, which is a perfect time to run an RPO. I, they, they're, just, they're a mess right now. So uh, when they get in the red zone, they give up. They go for field goals. And my favorite terrible stat defensively they've had seven possessions on defense in the four minute drill at the end of halves, you know, six halves, three games, two halves, seven possessions. They've given up 34 points on those seven possessions, four touchdowns, two field goals, and one stop. In what world is that team winning? A yeah, game? It's, it's something when you're up 14, seven to, they got to get a lot better to win to, to a team that's not doing anything. And then you give a touchdown field goal. I mean, yeah, they just find ways to lose. I guess you could tell me they were going to cover what is seven and a half. Yeah. I guess you could tell me they were going to lose by seven. And well, again, that's, that's what I was saying. I love the spread. They do. I will say they lose a lot of close games. The Giants very rarely get their teeth kicked in, so they do. They lose and they lose and they lose, but they usually lose one score games. Okay, uh, now let's. Uh, <clears throat> I tell you what, let's talk about those those NFC West games. Because, first of all, we both like the Rams against Arizona minus the four. Uh, Why not? The Rams have won and covered eight straight in the series. That's complete domination from one team to the next. Uh, Both teams are undefeated. Uh, Arizona, look, all you have to do is look at the games from both teams this year, and you know who's the better team right now. And that's the Rams 
There could be a hangover, but this is a division game. It's an important game. The Rams have covered 10 of the last 14 division games. Arizona 4-8-1 and one against the spread their last 13 division games. So we both like the Rams. Love both offenses. Love both coaches. Love both quarterbacks. Love one defense, the Rams. Perfect. Next up, we're going to disagree on this one. My five-star pick of the week is, and you're going to have this as one of your picks, Seattle getting three against San Francisco. Did you know Russell Wilson has never lost three games in a row? That's a good stat. He's 9-0 and oh after back-to-back -back losses. Also, Seattle has won six of the last seven in San Francisco. That's good They've stat. blown 15 and 10-point leads the last two weeks. And Kyle Shanahan, if you take out the Super Bowl season, Kyle Shanahan, 0-10 against the spread as a home favorite. San Francisco, 0-8-1 against the spread. They're last nine as division favorites overall. The, and they're 0-13 against the spread as home favorites versus losing teams. So there's a lot going against San Francisco here, but the bottom line for me is Seattle's 1-2. and two. They can't afford to go 1-3. and three. Uh, Russell Wilson, I'm just going to back Russell Wilson, and that's why they're my five-star. It's one of those things where if I'm going to put my the most money that I have invested in a week – then I'm, I'm going to say, okay, I'll live and die with Russell Wilson. Oh, those numbers are really impressive. Uh, if you're a numbers guy, you should bet you should go with everything you just said. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a numbers guy. I'm an I, uh, I'm not a, no, I know. Guy. I, I know. I, That's why they're my five star. I'm an I guy and a logic guy. And to me, four teams aren't going to make the playoffs from the NFC West. Somebody's going to fall behind. It's going to be Seattle. They have the worst defense. Um, yeah, that defense uh, uh, is very, very bad. And their offense scores in bunches, right? Like they score 17 points in a quarter and then they don't score in the second half. That's what they do. And that scares me. Like that's why that's how you blow 10 and 15 point leads. So yeah. and um, I don't understand it either because you look at it and it's like, well, I want, I, and, and, and some of it is Russell because, you know, there, there's a couple of throws that I even It's saw. almost like they fall asleep in the middle of the games. I don't yeah. know. It's it's and it's sometimes it's like okay, they had the one pass to, to to who was it? He, he chucked the ball down to like the number five receiver. I know, his name is Hart Penny Hart. Now the ball was in his hands. He was wide open though. If he would have threw the ball a little bit better, it would have been, you know. But it was a Russell Wilson. It wasn't a great pass. It was still in his hands. But you know when you're relying on Penny Hart to catch the ball and when you're down late, it's not going to work out for you. And I liked what I saw from San Francisco's offense in the second half last week. Yeah, that was another like, crazy game. Yeah, and something, but somebody lit a fire under Jimmy G. I like. I think they'll be able to carry that over against a really bad Seahawks defense. So, so you think that there were a lot of 49er fans on Twitter asking for Trey Lance in the second half? I do. Yeah, I was on Twitter. I saw them. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm sure that sure that th th those uh, opinions changed pretty quick. No, they still Did lost, you think so I don't know Green Bay was going to come back after they took yes. the lead? <laughs> yes. <laughs> if, you know, if you know anything about me after what have we known each other, three years, like, you know anything about me, I I believe in Aaron Rodgers at all costs. If you told me there were three seconds left and they had the ball on their own five, I would have said, yeah, they're probably going to win because Aaron Rodgers. I mean, the touch he put on those two passes oh, yeah. to Devontae Adams was unbelievable. Yeah, it's amazing that there were three teams who made just incredible comebacks. Uh, we've talked about two of them. We'll get to uh, this one next. That's why it's mind-boggling to me that they didn't, in that fourth down in the NFC Championship game, that they kicked the field goal there. It is mind-boggling to me the Packers kicked that field goal with like two minutes left against the box or yeah. whatever. Mind -boggling take, take the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands. Yep. And and we didn't even talk about the minute the the, the Miami fourth and twenty fourth and twenty, and it leads to an eventual touchdown and two point conversion. Now they lost, 
But, I mean, how do you have in the same week two fourth and 20s basically converted? I mean, I just, it's amazing. It's not college. That stuff happens in no. college, not the pros. All right, Baltimore. Neither one of them was on a penalty either. No. It's, uh, yeah. Baltimore. The Chargers. The Chargers converted that key fourth and nine or whatever, but they got a, to set up their win against the Chiefs. But they had uh, they benefited from a penalty. I think there was a defensive pass interference. There were, oh, yeah, uh, Snead, I think. There were some – I mean, the Chargers, that, that's that's team that needs to stop committing penalties. I mean, they are an ugly team to watch. The penalties every game. I mean, it's just bad. Okay, Baltimore-Denver. Now – when I when I when I said in the beginning of the season I didn't think Baltimore was going to make the playoffs I, I I guess I have to now because after the way that they won their last two games how do they not make the playoffs now <laughs> and they get the fumble late and then they convert a fourth and nineteen uh, but uh, this is a good game Denver's three and zero and they're at home and I've been riding Teddy Bridgewater again. He's 21 and 6 against the spread following a win. They're 3 and 0 against the spread as a team this year. Baltimore should not be 2 and 1. But did you know that this is the last road game for Baltimore until November 11th? That's amazing. In Miami. How's that? Then after that, they'll have 5 of 7 on the road. But Baltimore wins with a 66-yard NFL record field goal. Uh, I can't, I just can't see a third straight kind of win after those two wins. I just, they didn't deserve them. So I'm going to take Denver. And here's the other reason. I think Denver is getting slapped in the face. They're having a, I know they haven't played anybody, but they're a That's one a point favorite at home. Give them a little bit of respect considering Baltimore could be 0-3. I disagree. I actually was, I was thrilled. I'll take Baltimore. I was thrilled a lot that they were an underdog in this game. Um, Denver has beaten the Jets, the Giants, and Jacksonville. See, in my power rankings, those teams are 30, 31, and 32. Sure. So, so at least they look, beat them up. Prop, correct. Props to Denver yeah. for doing what they needed to do, taking care of business, beating them pretty good. But Baltimore has been there, done that, won the tough games, won the tough road games. Still look, almost I'm lost to Detroit. Little, I'm a, they, hey, they won, didn't they? They won. They found they a way to win. They won't convert 4th and 19 against Denver. Good teams <laughs> find a way to win. So they're a good team. They're a well-coached team. They find ways to win. And uh, if you're going to pick a close game, then I'll take Justin Tucker in the close game any, any day of the week, you know? So, uh, look, I am a little worried, if I'm being truly honest, about Fangio uh, not going to let Lamar Jackson run all over the place. Lamar Jackson going to have to make big throws in this game. But I believe he can do it, and I believe Teddy Bridgewater is a get-right candidate for Baltimore's defense. I have not been impressed with Baltimore's standard for defense is up here, and it's been down here so far. So I think this is a chance to get right. Now, the one thing to keep an eye on, uh, Judy's out for another couple of weeks. Hamler's <laughs> now out. So – at least it's funny because they start the season. You got Patrick Hamler, Judy, uh, 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 what's his name? The big dude Sanders. Is it, uh, Portland, so. and Oh, look at all these weapons. And now they Patrick. lose two of them. So at least they still got two left. Uh, so yeah. they're very fortunate that they have a deep receiving cast, but now they can't afford any more injuries. They're at their limit. Uh, Baltimore hosts Indianapolis on Monday night. We mentioned that before. Denver will be at Pittsburgh next week. All right. Speaking of Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh at Green Bay, Packers by six and a half. And this is your four star pick of the week. I completely see where you're coming from. The reason that I'm taking Pittsburgh to cover is because I'm going to give Mike Tomlin the benefit of the doubt one more time. Because I think last week was almost like, okay, it's over. I mean, Roethlisberger just doesn't have it anymore. When you lose to Cincinnati at home by two touchdowns, it's over. But in this spot, considering in this spot, P Pittsburgh beat Buffalo, week one of Buffalo. Mike Tomlin, 
if you look at his overall record against winning teams, it's incredible. And you just look at the – even just the fact they're 11-3 and three against the spread last 14 as a road dog. Um, I, I can go through so many, but the bottom line is they're a, an, a wildly impressive spread team in this spot, including with Mike Tomlin. If you want to get all the information, that's why you got to purchase the newsletter at playbooksports.com and take advantage of our special offer. A uh, nice segue there. Uh, just call that <laughs> toll-free number there and use the bonus code Prime, and uh, you'll get all those awesome trends of why Mike Tomlin kicks ass in this spot. But other than that, I, I completely see where you're coming from because Green Bay is so much better than Pittsburgh right now. Correct. Uh, it's crazy. These two guys, these this was a Super Bowl rematch from ten years ago, wow. and it's still the same. And it's still the same two quarterbacks <laughs> yeah. that played in that. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, Rodgers still has it. Roethlisberger doesn't. Um, and the Steelers defense, I don't know if TJ Watt's going to play. That's um, big. But they certainly did not. The Steelers defense, but the Steelers offense is, they have injuries every right? Deontay Johnson's out. TJ Watt's out. The Steelers offense is fading fast. The defense is fading slow. Uh, I just think the Steelers are not very good. Yeah, you see, I really the, – the main reason I like Pittsburgh also last week is I, it looked like T.J. Watt was going to play. So I I would think he's going to play this week if he was close to playing last week. They need him. He is just such a big part of their team. Okay, now the big one. The game. Patriots. Tom Brady, the Bucks, never Bay favorite by seven. What's interesting about this game? I don't know. I have to think about it. Brady, 27, six and one against the spread on the road after a loss. 14 and four straight up and against the spread. If he loses his first game of the season. I talked to Evan Lazar yesterday. We did our weekly Patriot show that's available on the site. I'm going to cut it in half and post out the second half of the show tomorrow because that's when we talk all about the game. Uh, So we talked a lot about it. And then I kind of – I also wanted to ask him just to give me a refresher on the Tom Brady-Bill Belichick deal because there's a lot of – a majority of Patriot fans that, that that have basically sided with Tom Brady in this divorce when you really go deep inside like Evan did. And that's just, you know, if you really understood everything, you wouldn't feel that way because the Patriots offered Brady a two year contract extension and he turned it down. And then when it was time for him to make the decision, well, it's, it's not that simple. No, it's but when it was simple. time for him to make the decision, he decided I was, I, I, I don't see any talent here. I don't want to sit around here for two years until you get cash to spend and I'm gonna go back to I'm gonna go down to Tampa where it's beautiful and warm, and I'm gonna I've got talent to play with. I mean, there's a lot of other things, but it wasn't it, it was overblown that, that that there was some sort of major Belichick hates Brady. Brady can't stand Belichick anymore. That's just that's nonsense. So I don't. I don't know if I agree with that. I'm not up there every day like Evan is. I'm. I'm I've read enough books on it. Seth Wickersham has a good book out on it right now. Uh, I read a good book on it last year on the Patriots dynasty. I, I don't know Buys that books. I agree with that. Sells sells huh? books. That's what that does. Yeah. I I uh, I'm not sure that that is you can't make it up. You can't make it up for a book. It has to be true. So uh, no, I'm not sure that that's true. Well, what's at all. also I well, think what's true is they offered him a two year deal. He didn't want it. Yeah, but there's a million other. There's a million reasons yeah, he, for, he, didn't he wanted more money at the time. So, what do you think about that? Uh, Tom Brady needs more money. Yeah, okay. I mean, I I mean, first of all, I think he took less money. Tom Brady is the gold standard of taking less money than your market value. That's why so, that's, that was nonsense. Yeah, so I uh, fully believe there's some bad blood there. I mean, it doesn't oh, take absolutely there's. Bad blood Tom there Brady seemed to pretty much said as much this week to Tom Curran at at uh, Nesson or yeah I think Nesson. So um, yeah, look, I mean it's a great game. Everybody wants to see it. I'm dying to see what Bill Belichick, quarterback tormentor, does to Tom Brady 
with 20 years of inside knowledge. I think this very much is a game the Patriots lead for the first half because Belichick is causing Brady fits, and then Brady figures it out like he figures out everybody. I don't know if you've heard, in case you've been living under a rock for 20 years, Tom Brady usually gets his fairy tale ending. So I was stunned it's only six and a half. I could see a tie game with four minutes or five minutes left, and he goes right down the field, throws a touchdown to Gronk, boom, game over. Yeah, I'd, I'd actually be surprised if that happened. And, and you've got him as a three-star. Now, I haven't picked him as one of my fav, my top picks, but I do like Tampa Bay almost as you, yeah. as much as you do. I yeah. I can't see this game being it's close. Like picking the It's like picking the main character or the villain to have, to have the happy ending. And I am going to pick Tom Brady, the main character, over the villain. The and it's there. just the Patriots are just not prepared. And they're not good. Yeah, they're not yeah, prepared they're not. to face Tom Brady right now. I mean, you know, they just don't. They lost to the Saints at home. And yeah. and if Brown, if 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 their offensive tackle doesn't play, they have no chance yeah. because they can't even block. And 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 they couldn't do it against the Saints. If it wasn't for think, Wilson throwing four picks, they yeah. weren't moving the ball against the Jets. I do think they'll have enough pride in the game. Uh, not to let Belichick get blown out. They want to prove themselves to Brady. I do think they will have pride in the game to hang around. Maybe it's just for three quarters. Uh, maybe it's just for a half. But I don't expect a 28 nothing second quarter lead for the Bucs. I don't Yeah, see I would doubt that too. I don't think – I don't because I – see, now I'm going to be intrigued to see how Brady reacts in the game. Yeah. Because I don't – I think sometimes players get this feeling. I mean, I, I know where they're coming from when they want to stick it to the former yeah. team, but I, but a lot of times they don't understand that when you have these gyrations on national TV about sticking it to your former team, what you're really doing is, is you're sticking it to the fans. You think the fans really like the fact that you do that to them? Like yeah. when Robbie Anderson did this in the end zone after he scored the touchdown, it's like, yeah. you, there were a lot of jet fans that like you, Robbie, why are you doing that to them for <laughs> I think Tom Brady is smart enough to know how to handle this. Situation. I think so too. I don't think he's going to be, you know, pumping fists every time he scores a touchdown. Oh, I do. I think he'll, I think he'll be pumping fists. I don't think he'll be doing. Mo- I don't think he'll be mocking or he won't be dancing on the Patriots logo. Let's put it. <laughs> no, that way. that's that's just not him anyway. But I, I just don't think he's going to. If they go up twenty-eight seven, I don't think he's going to be pumping fists. I just that's really that to me that's you know going a little overboard. You know, you don't need to do that. You won a Super Bowl last year. This is not a very good team. Uh, but that's why I'm interested to see how how it's gonna how they're gonna react. But the fans like them, they love them, I mean, and it'll be interesting to see uh how they react. Uh not when they introduce them, but when they score touchdowns. You know? All right. Uh also on Monday night football, uh we both like the Raiders in this one. You like them as an upset pick. Uh this is just gonna be one of my picks. I'm taking the four. You're going to take Las Vegas to win the game outright. Uh, they survived the game against Miami in that fourth and 20. Uh, they have owned this uh, series. Really, if you look at it, uh, the, the trends favor the Raiders uh, a lot in, in this uh, matchup. They've beaten them three out of four. Uh, the Raiders are nine and four against the spread. Their last 13 as a road dog, while the Chargers are three and 11. Their last 14 is a home favorite. So the exact opposite uh, in this scenario. And I just don't think the Chargers are good enough to, you know, beat Las Vegas by more than a score. So I could see this game coming down to the wire. And, you know, I, I have, I, I can understand why you picked them to win the Raiders. Yeah. I hopped on your, I hopped on your bandwagon essentially. Uh, I think you sent me an interesting note that the mon- Monday night the home team is three and zero and three and zero against the oh, spread. Oh, okay. I forgot about that. There you go. The, the Chargers are uh, have like one of the worst home field advantages yeah. in the NFL, so that yeah. so that doesn't scare me. And Derek Carr is thrown for two hundred and fifty yards more than any other quarterback in the NFL right now. Two hundred and that's a game. That's a game's worth of more yards. He's playing lights out. I think they win the game. And I'm a Chargers guy. I think the Chargers are good. I, I And I'm not a Raiders guy, but I just like this matchup for the Raiders. And, and again, like I said, the Chargers, they, they have to be leading the NFL in penalties. I haven't looked, but they have to be. It's just the penalties just drive you crazy. 
Uh, they're one, three, and one against the spread their last five on Monday Night Football. The Raiders have covered six out of seven on Monday Night Football. Chargers host Cleveland next week. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's it. A couple more things. Uh, bef- the Chargers are third in the NFL in penalties. Oh, who's who's the most? Do you know? Philadelphia, Philadelphia by a mile. Wow. Okay. Thirty. Well, then again, that game against Dallas, I could see that. The, the penalties 35. in that game, I mean, that was incredible. 35 for Tampa, 20. Excuse me, 35 for Philly, 27 for Tampa, 26 for the Chargers. Wow, Tampa. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I'll talk to you next week after we re- uh, recap the Rutgers upset over Ohio State. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and then uh, we'll preview week uh, five in the NFL. Thanks, Ryan.